really odd how this happened. There was a like the fir the very first um, head headstock tuner that you know vibration tuner where you could turn the volume off and it just recognized the vibrations and you could tune like that. Just a clip-on tuner um, was. I was trying to find out who, what company produced that, and there's several several of them out there now, you know. But uh, at the time, you know, they they sent me to John Hornby Skews, which is the parent company of Fred King and also the the vintage brands. And um, the first one I saw was the vintage V52, which is like a stock telly, right? Uh, no bells and whistles. It's just like the most basic telly you could think of, but it sounds superb and it, and the feel is great. I wasn't really looking for another guitar, but uh, it just sounded so amazing, and I let him know. And I said, um, he said, I don't have any of those tuners with me here, but when I when we get back to England, I could send you, send you, you know, a few, you know. I got home, and there was this big box. I just, you know, he was going to send me a few tuners. I thought, what is this, you know? And someone said, your tuners have arrived, you know, there it is, you know, so. I opened the box and there was this V52 with a note from him saying, no strings attached, just like to get your comments on this, you know, play it for a while and just let me know what you think. And I just flipped over it and I said, I think it's wonderful. I said, uh, you know, I'm in between deals. If you wanted to do something, you know, I'd be ha happy to play one of these. And uh, anyway, so we, we got to talking. We set up an appointment and um, Trev Wilkinson was there in the office with him, and uh, uh, they they decided, or, or between us, we decided to go with the Fred King first, which I don't think they even had at, at that show. But uh, it's essentially the same thing. It's just a bit more upmarket. You know, it's got more to it. You know, like, I mean, this, for instance, has um, it's an alder body with a maple neck. I've always loved the sound of. Alder, but with a rosewood neck, it tends to be a little too soft sounding, you know. So I like the warmth of the alder, um, but I needed some of that punch back, you know. So putting a maple on the alder body just seems like the perfect combination, you know. Just get a great sound. And also, since then, we we decided to put an ash top, just a very thin bit on the on the top, so that further adds a little bit of definition and, and punch, you know, which is lacking for me on a lot of the '60s guitars. Like this, basically, uh, wound for my specs. This is basically a, a Strat neck pickup. It's uh, I think it's called an SSL2 JD. Um, they both have JD in the and it's like basically my this is like the JD for the neck strap sound and and this is the, the JD for the telly bridge. It's just like I say, a marriage made in heaven. And then a proper kind of jazz tone. suggests like a larger body guitar like an L5 or something like that with like a humbucker or, or a P90 something in between those two my favorite pickups you know is like a, a Strat pickup that's actually if there was anything good that came out of the late 60s early 70s it was like the the weaker Strat pickups for the that was terrible for the bridge because that didn't need to be any weaker sounding but for the neck pickup sound that was great because being that weak you get more high end out of it and you and you get plenty of fullness because it you know enjoys the position in the position that it's in you get all of that string movement and the nice harmonics so you know, sound boomy or one doesn't make the other sound weak you know it's just like I say a marriage and made in heaven
that was much, much later, because uh, I wanted a jazz master. It was between a Stratocaster and a jazz master, because I liked the shape of both of those. Um, the original Telecaster shape, I thought, was just kind of crude and, you know, just looked like a plank of wood that they stuck a neck on, you know. It wasn't until I started working at a music shop uh, in Charing Cross Road called Selmer's. It was one of the two biggest that was in the, you know, I was there like 67, 68. So all the bands that were breaking out back then, you know, it's like no matter where in the country from where they were, where they originated, they all ended up in London because that's where you got discovered, you know. So everybody came in there. I sold Derek Clapton his Red 335, you know, a week before the the, uh, the Farewell Cream performance, which uh, he, he asked if, you know, I, I knew about it. I said, I've already got tickets. <laughs> so, and I was so delighted because he played that Red 335 the whole night, you know? He had the Les Paul on the stand, but never picked it up the whole night. It was just, a, my, my day was made, you know? And um, Justin Hayward bought one of those for me too, of the Moody Blues, and uh, Pete Townsend came in, nearly bought a guitar for me, but uh, he didn't come back. I, 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 sh I was always very honest with them. I said, this is a good guitar, but the pickups could really, you know, benefit from being changed. And he said, that's no problem. I got loads of pick, tons of pickups. Of course, of course he went. All those broken guitars, you know, it's like he had tons of pickups. But um, it was once when I was demonstrating a um, an amp for somebody, and I was looking for a Strat on the wall, you know, it's, and uh, there there weren't any. The other, there were four floors, and I think you know the other employees obviously grabbed. We had two or three, you know, there were loads of guitars, but I think there were three Strats available. So there was nothing but a Tele there, and I thought, okay, well that's a Fender. That's that can't be too too far off. And I just I couldn't believe the sound in the in the bridge you know the bridge position. You know, that. you know just never got a sound like that out of a bridge pickup on a Strat. I just thought, man, I had no idea how great this was. So I had to have a telly. Uh, then it sounded like that, and I couldn't understand it. I thought, how is that happening? Because I thought that the only way to get that sound. Or the reason that you got that sound was because of the close proximity of the pickups and that the magnetic fields were like crossing which just kind of colored the tone to give you that kind of nice quacky sound and um, anyway it's what i the first person i thought to bring it to was seymour i thought can you check this out and find out why it's doing this you know so he had it for a day i said please don't destroy the pickup he said i won't have to touch the pickup you know put it on his meters and scopes, whatever, you know. And uh, I'm not quite sure of the process, but uh, he came back and he said, it's really odd, whoever wound that pickup, the white and the black wires were actually reversed to the way they, they should be. So when your tech put it in the guitar thinking it was in phase, in fact, it was out of phase. And he said, but the reason you didn't recognize that as being out of phase uh, is because it was something else. There was a capacitor wire, wire wired inside the neck pickup. Whoever wound it, wound it halfway, inserted a cap, and then finished the winding. And what the, the effectively, what the, what the result of that was, was that the, uh, the reverse phase, instead of going 180 degrees, it was inhibited by this, the presence of the cap, and just landed in that sweet spot, very closely emulating the, the mechanical phase effect you get by having the two pickups, you know, like a middle and bridge pickup together. So it's doing the same thing. And I thought, well, that's, that's great. I said, I noticed um, that the bottom strings come out better than they do on a, that normal position. You know, most people that play to that, uh, uh, you know, that nice quacky tone, they stay in the mid range or go up higher, but avoid the low notes because they struggle to be heard. And Seymour said, yeah, because you get a sort of transparency effect by having the magnetic fields crossing, you know, and that type of thing, and it's, uh, it just, obviously the notes don't really ring out. I said, it's not happening on this guitar. He said, no, because we achieved it a different way. You got a great sound, you know, here's the, you don't lose any bass or bottom end like you would from a complete reverse phase. Here's the normal sound in the middle. And then the, the quacky tone. Come, they really come out, you know, notes 
are just incredible. So I, I said to Seymour, well, that's great, but uh, how do I get the middle sound back? Mm -hmm. He said, well, you can't as long as that cap is in the, in the pickup. Mm -hmm. But he said, what we could do is get a, a super five-way switch, because a normal Strat five-way wouldn't have enough lugs and, you know, uh, options and um, basically mm -hmm. where you want wherever you want to access that sound on a five-way we'll just wire the cap there on the switch with the re with the phase with the phase reversed with the wires reversed just in that position only so that you got that nice quack tone there but when you go back to the middle you get your normal normal sound back so it's like I could have my cake and eat it too. It's unbelievable. Well, I've always liked the, the late 56 style neck. I played somebody's Mary Kay Stratocaster and I thought, God, this is the best neck I've ever played. He said, yeah, late 56 style Fender did that.